what it do, boo. I am here to talk to you about burning. Uh, after you get plastic surgery, it is a very uncomfortable burning sensation that you'll start to experience. Some people experience it in extreme manner. Some people it's very minimal. Some people don't experience it at all. We call those people surgery unicorns. Most people are not surgery unicorns. They're like real life unicorns and they go and get surgery. But because the, the burning sensation is a buildup of fluid and toxins because you just had real life surgery. Your lymphatic system, we've talked about it in passing a whole bunch. Your lymphatic system is like the janitor of the body and it goes around sweeping up all of the waste matter. Let's have a whole freaking mini anatomy and physiology session right quick. All right, cool. So your heart is an active pump and it actively pumps up and down at the same time. There's two different chambers. And one chamber is taking nutrient poor blood and oxygen deficit blood to your lungs. You breathe out bad air. You pick up good air. It goes back to the other chamber. And then that chamber actively pumps it out to all of your extremities. And it goes down to your kneecaps and your toes and your eyelashes and your ears. And the cells in that area take the nutrients off of it we're gonna go backwards. That is micro. What happens on a micro level also happens on a macro level. What happens on a macro level also happens on a micro level. Macro is when I eat food, nom, 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 it goes down into my tummy, my tummy digests it. It goes into my small intestines. My small intestines absorbs all of the nutrients that it needs or that my body can use that goes into your bloodstream and that goes into the chamber that becomes the nutrient rich blood that is also oxygen rich blood and when that portion of the chamber of the heart pumps and it goes out that goes from macro to micro now we pause at the small intestines and the small intestines took all the good stuff well the stuff that your body couldn't use winds up going into either your kidneys and you pee it out or your colon and you poop it out. Anything that your body cannot use is excrement or it's waste. You will eliminate it out. That's what happens on a macro level. I eat, my body absorbs what I can use and it gets rid of the things that I can't use. Your cells do the same thing. So after your heart pumps, it goes down to your kneecaps and your toenails and your pinkies, the cells in those areas eat up what they need. Nom, 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 nom. They poop out the things that they can't use. And then that is returned on that roller coaster, your cardiovascular roller coaster circulatory system. And that is the nutrient poor blood that goes back up and the system continues to happen. And, yo, and it does it so fucking fast. Your body is so dope and amazing. Like, pause this video and say, thank you, body. No, seriously, do it. That wasn't rhetorical. Thank you, body. Our bodies are so bomb, right? And now, along this cardiovascular roller coaster, wrapped around every orifice in your body, specifically around your veins, I mean, they're around your arteries too, you have your lymphatic system. And there's different portions of the lymphatic system. Because this is a crash course in anatomy and physiology, I'm not gonna go into super crazy in depth and names and all the other stuff, which you need to know. Uh, your lymph nodes. So the lymphatic vessels wrap themselves around the cardiovascular system and anything that happens to fall off of the cardiovascular roller coaster, your lymphatic system picks up along with anything that's already free floating in your body, such as free radicals, enzymes, toxins. Your lymphatic system is the janitor. It picks up all of that stuff, the sludge, it's just bomb. It's like the truancy officer of the body. If somebody is hanging out somewhere it's not supposed to be, it sends them to where it's supposed to go. If something falls off and the janitor, AKA the lymphatic system, gets a hold of it, it sends it where it's supposed to be. Super efficient system until you go and get fucking surgery. You get plastic surgery in all the areas that you had surgery in, your lymphatic system gets destroyed. It's not that you don't have one, you do, it's just crippled and it's struggling. And your body loves you so much that it builds you a new one, but it takes about two to three months for it to do that, right? Like I, I promise this whole A and P session has a purpose to why you're experiencing these burning sensations after you get surgery. Now, you remember how I said what happened on a macro level also happens on a micro level? Macro, 
I've used this analogy before. One of these days, I'm going to find a non-ratchet analogy, but for now, you're stuck with this one. Let's say you got hit by a truck, but you don't die. Congratulations. Go you. I mean, it is fucking 2020, so it's up in the air how this is going to end. But I'm going to go ahead and be your fairy goat mother and tell you that you don't die. And you have to learn how to walk again. But in the meantime, you're laying down in the bed, and every time you ring the little bell, ding, 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 Somebody comes in, or you push the button. They come in, you done peed and pooped on yourself. They'll roll you to your side. Eh. They'll move off the dirty sheets. They'll wipe you off, lay out some clean sheets, lay you back down. Eh. And then you go back to being like semi-temporarily paralyzed. What would happen if you push the button and ring the little bell? And don't nobody fucking come. And now you're sitting and you're peeing your poop for minutes hours days like if you peed on yourself and pooped on yourself keep in mind i said this is excrement whatever your body cannot use is waste matter you'll defecate it out on a macro level and you now sitting in that you'll get all kinds of bed sores it'll be painful toxins eat eradicate and erode whatever surface it is pressed up or pursed up against right same thing happens on a micro level your janitor the truancy officer of your body is no longer there. You don't have anyone coming along and pushing along the cellular waste and sludge of your body is sitting stagnant. Just like if you were to be laying in a bed after you got hit by a truck or car or a plane, I don't know, it's fucking 2020 and you didn't die, it would start to burn. Same thing happens on a micro level. Oh my God. Boom. Look what I did there. You see what I did there? I made that connection. I hope you picked up what I just dropped down. Mm, 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 mm. Um, the burning sensation is because the fluid, the fluid is a compilation of tumescent, white blood cells, red blood cells. Uh, you got platelets, plasma, some leftover anesthesia, lymph. Lymph is cellular waste, liquid fat that didn't get absorbed. What else? All that stuff contains toxins as well within the fluid and when the fluid moves it burns so every time you cough you're going to feel a burning sensation somewhere because of the stagnation and because you don't have a lymphatic system when you walk you move you you stretch um whenever you're putting your faha on if you twerk or turn in a certain manner that creates a jolt of circulatory sensation in an area that has a high retention of fluid it's going to burn it's a part of the territory you don't like it don't get fucking surgery Oh, I'm sorry. If you're watching this video, you probably already did. So that just means that you gotta be a gangster and put your big girl panties on and handle your shit. You'll be fine, you won't die, I promise. Here are some things that you can do to help. It's not gonna necessarily offset the burning sensation. It's going to burn. It may burn a lot, it may burn a little. The things that aid into what are, are the levels of your burning or what dictate that usually are things that you, you at this point have no control over but your pre-surgery foundational health your metabolic and cellular health uh how healthy is your liver how hydrated are you how healthy are you how much do you work out or the health of your lymphatic system your kidneys all of that stuff plays a big role into whether you feel a lot of burning or a little bit of burning to minimize and truncate some of the burning discomfort you can take lymphatic drops you can take liver cleansing and liver flushing pills. You can dry brush. You can use unicorn oil. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Unicorn oil. I actually created this <laughs> to help you all heal faster and better and easier in less time with less pain and less discomfort. It is available now on timeout.com. You type in unicorn oil, put in your zip code and it'll be to you in a few days but uh it has anti-inflammatory properties that are able to permeate through the skin barrier and actually help out with what uh, you're dealing with some of the burning and inflammation the swelling oh drinking tea all right so drink tea every 30 minutes if you ever drink anything warm you just get like this uh warming sensation this um happy chill through your body it's not like chills as if you're cold or you've seen something scary or if like a ghost came by or some shit because they're real but like uh when you sip it just it gives you this like 
warming, fuzzy feeling throughout your whole body, that's your lymphatic system. By stimulating your lymphatic system, you're helping to jumpstart it. Has, have you ever had a car that like broke down on you and um, the battery died and you're trying to like it's trying to start up, it's trying to get this thing going. That's your body when you're sipping tea. It'll like help to jumpstart it while your body's in the process of rebuilding you a new lymphatic system. Walking is gonna be one of your besties. Uh, do the doll strut. Doll strut, I tell my clients to walk every two hours the very first week after surgery, even in the middle of the night, set an alarm, wake up, go walking. After that, um, every four hours or so, you don't have to wake up in the middle of the night, past uh, day eight post-op, just walking, putting one foot in front of the other. The activity level that you should be maintaining is whatever week you are, multiply that by a thousand up until week eight and then that's how many steps that you should be taking a day. If you're one week post-op, you should be taking roughly about a thousand steps a day. It's not as many as you think. If you're three weeks post-op, you should be taking 3,000 steps a day. If you're seven weeks post-op, you should be taking 7,000 steps a day. The more you walk that movement and that motion, because you have, along the cardiovascular system, you have arteries and you have veins. Your arteries and your arterial part of your cardiovascular system has an active pump, AKA your heart, that is actively pushing stuff out but your veins, they don't have anything actively pulling things back in and getting your circulation going and moving. By you walking, you're helping to counteract the effects of gravity and help to offset the fact that you don't have a fully put together lymphatic system. The more you walk, the more you are encouraged. Retention and edema and endemic, is that a word, endemic? I'm gonna go with it because I like it, but I'm almost positive it's not a word that endemic endemosis <laughs> fluid retention to be returned back to the heart for well through your system for processing and it goes towards your lymph nodes so while your lymphatic system the actual vessels and the uh, um the more superficial structures were destroyed during surgery the lymph nodes are still intact unless they got hit and got destroyed but they're deeper down and they usually are some gangsters they're still there you're gonna dry brush towards your heart. Uh, self massage is another one. You're gonna self massage using your unicorn oil. Available on timeout.com. Total shameless plug. Towards your lymph nodes. Your lymph nodes are located anywhere that you have an appendage attached to your torso. And now, while you have lymph nodes, smaller little polyps throughout your body, you have these big clustering of mother nodes that are located where your head connects to your torso. They're around here where your arms connect to your torso, they're around here, and where your leg connects to your torso. They're, uh, we call those the inguinal nodes, these are the axillary nodes, and these are your clavicular nodes. You're going to massage and dry brush towards those nodes using the unicorn oil. And it gets processed, uh, sent to your liver, the good stuff gets returned to your heart, the bad stuff gets sent to the kidneys and you wind up peeing it out or pooping it out later. All of that for today's unicorn anatomy and physiology lesson to say, burning is normal, it happens, it's uncomfortable, you won't die, I promise. If you still are feeling burning sensation in certain areas, and let's say you're further along, it is nine times out of 10 because you still have fluid there, massage it. You can use your fingertips and just massage towards your heart, massage towards your lymph nodes, and the more that you go over that area, the burning will start to subside and minimize and decrease because the fluid is being processed. You will notice a heightened amount of burning sensation as your circulation starts to stagnate, which is why I say to walk as much as possible. You'll experience it usually more in the evenings than you will during the day. You're more active during the day. As your circulation and as you start to slow down, your swelling starts to persist more. And imagine that the unicorn oil is a vessel and your body, when it's swelling, is actually trying to protect you. It, there was a traumatic experience that happened in this area. So your body is like, oh no, let me come and give you a barrier of protection and padding. And so the swelling, persists and increases as your circulation tends to go down. Um, I can go into another whole nother AMP session as to why dealing with vasoconstriction and vasodilation, but I'll spare you on this video. Uh, make sure you have your faha accessories inside of your faha and, or your compression garment. If you're using a waist trainer or if you're using a corset, 
please don't use the ace bandit method i hate it and it will not allow even compression it will not allow your body to drain internally evenly and it usually will increase your burning sensations but make sure you have your foams in there your front board and your backboard if you're using a backboard still and it will help the the added compression on your body will help to get rid of the burning sensations that you are feeling and experiencing if all else fails you know how to find me i can help you out book you a virtual consultation and let's talk about it we'll talk it through don't be good today when you were meant to be great Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Perfectly Thai, for daily tips and surgery healing hacks. Follow us on Instagram for the latest products and join the free Facebook group, Time Out Post Op Corner, for in-depth medically backed instructions to optimize body goal journeys as we trailblaze history in post-op education.